we had heard that, that the wages of men had been stagnating. What we found instead was that once you factor in rising non-employment among prime age men, that they weren't stagnant, they were actually in outright decline. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, reduced earning power for men in America. Reversing a history of steady wage growth and upward mobility, American men today face rising rates of unemployment, and many who do have jobs see stagnant wages, earning little more than their counterparts did in the 1950s. Advances in technology, expanding globalization, and the need for more education all fuel this trend, notes senior fellow Adam Looney. For many Americans in search of advancement, a leg up in the labor market is hard to find. If you look uh, particularly at men over the last 40 years, what you see is that for men that work, their wages have been roughly stagnant, but there's been rising rates of non-employment. So for example, in 1969, almost 95% of, of prime age men worked. Today, almost one in five men don't work at all. And so when you combine these two factors, stagnant wages for men who work and rising, and rising non-employment, uh, among men, what you see is that the median middle-of-the-road American man actually earns about 28 percent less than his counterpart in 1969. Adam, you write, for a certain group of men, there simply isn't enough opportunity for them to find work and to increase their wages. If you look at why these men uh, are experiencing fewer opportunities, why they're, why they're less likely to find work, you can look at proximate causes. If you ask them what they're doing, you see that they, it's not that they're working less not because they choose to, but because they have fewer opportunities. So if you ask men what they're doing, they're much more likely today to say that they're unable to find work. They're more likely today to say that they're uh, disabled or, uh, or unable to work. Uh, they're actually much more likely to be incarcerated, for example. And those are all largely involuntary uh, reasons for non-employment. And, and so what you see is that non-employment is closely related to the job opportunities more broadly for less skilled workers. And certainly education plays a role in all of this. The premium to a college degree has increased a lot over the last 30 years. A college graduate now earns roughly double, almost double what an individual with only a high school diploma earns. And, and that's true right off the bat. So we just looked recently at the earnings of 23, 24-year-olds today. So these are people who graduated from college in the midst of this terrible recession. And while many are undoubtedly struggling to find work and to find great jobs, what you see is that almost 90% of them have found jobs. And if you look at 23, 24 year olds who didn't go on to college, who have only a high school diploma, what you see is that almost two thirds uh, work. Uh, so basically one in three people with a high school diploma can't find a job. And what about innovation and technology? Do they factor into this as well? The opportunities for American men uh, and for less skilled workers in the United States more generally is tied to pat you know, changing patterns of trade and advances in technology. So to give one example of that, if you looked at manufacturing jobs uh, 40 years ago, if you had a high school diploma, you could get a pretty good job uh, in manufacturing in the United States. Uh, it was a high paying job and, and if you looked at guys that had a high school diploma you saw that 96 percent of them were able to find work. But, but as technology has advanced and, as pa and trade patterns have changed, uh, those factories have modernized, uh, they require fewer workers, uh, manufacturers that require less skilled labor ha have moved some operations abroad to lower wage countries. And so that has all put downward pressure on the wages of uh, lower skill Americans. So how do we reverse this trend? One obvious implication is that we should send more people to college. And that turns out not to be true just for college, but it's true for a wide range of educational investments. Starting from early childhood investments, improvements in our K through 12 system, uh, policies to increase high school completion, policies to encourage greater college attendance, those would all be investments that, if done properly, would be uh, excellent investments, not just from uh, uh, a labor market return, but also they're just financially good investments.
And you also took a look at the situation for women. Are they facing similar challenges? The same labor market forces, are, broadly speaking, are also at work for women and also in, impact uh, the outcomes for families. But for women in particular, the, these negative trends have largely been overcome by the much more positive influences of rising labor force participation, rising rates of educational attainment, uh, better access to good jobs and higher paying jobs, which have all meant that women's outcomes have been much better over time than those of men. That doesn't mean that they've been universally positive. So for example, over the last decade, what you'd see is that uh, women's wages have, have appeared to stagnate and their actual uh, employment rates have declined over time. But more generally, uh, women are doing much better. If you look at families, what you see is that over the last 35 or so years, the annual earnings of families have actually increased. So if you look at um, a traditional mother, father, uh, and child, what you see is that their earnings have increased about 13%. The reason why earnings have increased is largely because the number of hours they work each year has increased. And that's basically because more women now participate uh, actively in the, in the formal labor market. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your Blackberry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.